See right now, I've just took this again, this back angle here, I'm just working the neck a bit. And again, see this little faded area with the blue? That's actually a really good illustration. I'm gonna back up just a second. That just really shows you what fade by angle does. When you apply the paint and you let go, it just, it's faded there. And that's what you want, because you don't want those stretches um, over to the side. In this particular case, the color is pretty solid, so you might not even notice on first glance that it was stretched. But as you saw before, like this type of heavy stretching that we see. This is again, pausing. Don't get confused because when I'm in the brush um, tile view, the plane is in the opposite, like it's perpendicular to a viewport. So uh, pretty much, so everything we're seeing here is heavily stretched, but this is just that projection of the brush, okay? And we're going to go and hit that align to viewport button again, I believe. Yeah. And then, um, so now that the, the this plane is facing us, it's as much easier than clicking rotate and trying to angle it just right. You just you click align to viewport. And it just makes it flat, flush on, so you, um, in the viewport plane. And then from there, you can tweak with moving and, and sizing. There's also this auto align with viewport option. That's actually really powerful. We're not going to use it right this moment because sometimes you want to keep that plane flick, fixed and as you rotate around. But what that option does is it allows it, it keeps it flush with the viewport no matter what you do. So if you just had a tileable texture or something and you're just putting features all over, if you just had pure skin, for example, like it was just a nice little patch of skin and that was your texture, you might want to keep that auto align on and then no matter which angle you rotate around, it's still is flat, flush on um, to the surface. <laughs> and again, we're just uh, doing a little more of the same here. Uh, I'm going to just hit the uh, bottom of the neck here. And uh, we took the front view again. And I think I'm going to do the same little thing where I'm going to cheat a bit, where I'm rotating the model a um, little off, even though that the, the picture is, is straight on, just so I can get this paint, this skin texture underneath that neck. Because we got all that important detail on the face right off the bat, so we don't have to worry about absolute accuracy. And again, you can see here, the sim this is a case where you'll want to turn off the symmetry at some point and get rid of these, um, these freckles because uh, nobody has freckles that symmetric. That would just be scary. And okay, what are we doing here? So um, turning off the symmetry just to get rid of that shady spot. And there's a few things we're going to do here. We're just going to do some touching up because it's never going to be perfect. So this little part, lighter part here. So what I'm going to do is take the, uh, um, the, the retouch brush and now I take smudge. And uh, in order to make it look not so, um, so airbrushed, I'm going to turn the density down and I'm going to smudge that. So uh, it's no smooth smudging. And now it depends on the compression that you're on YouTube and what resolution you're looking at. You might not be able to see this properly, but if you do a smudge or a blur, it, uh, things can sometimes look a little too smooth and a little unrealistic. And if and if you can see uh, this, you know, the, the texture has a natural amount of graininess. So on this etc. brush, which is named because it just contains um, a bunch of types which don't necessarily fit in other categories. We have noise. So I'm going to use this noise and this is going to basically just sort of uh, add some speckles to the texture up and down and when it's at 100% that's far too strong. Um, so we're going to lower that value down to uh, we chose 10% here. And uh, now and we also have the density down. That's why the, the, this, this um, overlay looks like this. These little red and uh, re uh, yellow speckles are just sort of illustrating where the brush stroke is going. So um, as you can see, let's go back. See If you can see, if you have the resolution, you can see that that is kind of for speckly now. And so it makes it look less airbrushed. Okay, and so um, here we go. We're just looking for some uh, some rough spots. And notice here where the, the front, the, the side image of the ear is also appearing behind the ear. That's because we applied that paint straight through because that culling type was set to none. So now what we're gonna do is, it's not that important of an area. I'm not gonna spend too much time on it. So I'm removing the texture. This is a, a key here. I don't know if you guys have seen that before. It's simple, but it's a minor little thing. But if you wanna remove a brush image, okay, you just click on the icon here, and then you click on the no texture icon. And then from this point on, you don't have any texture because then I want this solid color, which I use the pick uh, the color grabber picker tool here, and I sample the color, 
And now I'm going to go in there and just paint a solid color. And this is a common thing. I'm going to point this out. See, I'm, I made this software and I sometimes get stumped. I, I, I try to play a, uh, a paint stroke and nothing happened. All right, let's go back to the other again. Let's do this. Okay, and play. And watch me do this. And I'm like, oh my god, what's going on? What's going on is, oh, I tried fade by angle because I thought that was it because that was on. Still nothing. Well, it's because you, sometimes you got to remember that um, I just thought it was symmetry. No, it's because the strength is at 10% here, right? And the density is also very low too because I did that before for the uh, the other tools, the etc. brush with noise so and the smudge. So I just put those back to 100%. And now I'm painting again. See, so look at all that. And again, this is really smooth and solid. And I'm just going to take, uh, I'm going to smudge some color into it like this. I'm not spending a whole lot of effort on this. Um, if you want to do a really professional texture, you want to maybe spend some more time on this sort of thing. And then again, I'm going to take that etc. brush with the noise. And oh, and it was too strong. So let's bring that back down to nine. And um, there we go. See, looks that little grittiness. If you can see it, then it's just adding a little bit of grittiness so that this doesn't look like it's airbrushed. And again, you can, if you professional jobs, you want to do a much better uh, job than that, but it's behind the ear, and this is a tutorial video, so that's all the time I'm going to spend on that ear. Now, looking around, everything's looking pretty good from all angles. And again, this is a real time model, so. Um, there's uh, certain things that as far as the shape, it's a little jaggedy, but that's okay. This is looking pretty good for a real-time model. And uh, I didn't mention it before, but this is this the head texture is 1024 by 1024, and here it is. You can see that laid out. That's the way the UVs have been laid out. And uh, again, materials, material head, and that map was in there. And so I'm just sort of showing you where all this stuff is, like where everything lives, so you know uh, what to do with it. Now at this point, um, well, essentially you can, um, this pretty much wraps up what I want to show you with the video. Um, it demonstrated how to, uh, to, to, to first morph the, uh, the model into shape, how you, using the photo references, using this trick where I'm using the brush image, uh, with the overlay to morph the, uh, to morph the image, uh, to morph the model. Okay. And then I'm going through bringing those back in and then actually painting those textures and having everything sort of fall right into place because it's been pre-morphed to shape. And if you're using something like Second Life, for example, where at this time, as far as I know, you cannot import your own morph targets. Um, but you can use this, uh, you can create these morphs. Uh, essentially just to get this to texture to line up properly and then you paint the texture and when you apply it into uh, uh, to Second Life then you could adjust your sliders and get the face shape the way you want it. Um, there is another trick too if you already have an existing shape of your avatar you can export that from um, from your viewer from your Second Life viewer which I'm going to show you how to do in another video and then that way you can paint directly on the shape of the avatar as you have it set up in Second Life. But that's another tutorial. I'm not going to get too much into it. And uh, let me see. Yeah, and in this video, I didn't show you how to export. Um, well, I'll do that in another video officially. But essentially, if you want to export these maps, you can either click on the Maps tab and then right-click on any one of the maps. Let's see if I can just find a graphic of the maps here. Okay, here we are. Um, so... If uh, you click on the map tab, you can right click on any individual map and then you can say export and then locate the file you export, you, you know, the, the folder you want to export it to, specify the file name if you want it to be different than it's already there. And there you go. You save it out. It's all good. PNG, J JPEG, etc. These formats are all supported. Uh, I often, when it comes to doing uh, stuff back and forth, I would uh, recommend you use a format like PNG because it's lossless as opposed to JPEG because if you decide to pop this texture out in some other program and do something with it and then bring it back in, you don't get any sort of um, uh, cauliflowering, any kind of artifacts happening. Uh, so anyway, you can right click, export, or you can alternatively, you can go in the file menu, export, and say image maps, that's what you want to look for, and then that will kind of save them all out at the same time. Uh, but this you can do them individually. 
So this concludes this tutorial. Uh, please stay tuned because I'll be cranking a lot more of these tutorials in the days and weeks to come. Uh, I'm really excited about this workflow we got going on here. I'm excited about talking to you a little more personally about the software and uh, not overproducing. Uh, overproducing the videos is nice, it's clean, but it takes a long time and I can only do so many. This way I might ramble a little bit and you might have to put up with a bad joke or two, but I'll put out more videos. I'm going to show you how to use all the individual features, uh, tips and tricks, and so on and so forth. So like I said, stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, uh, check back often, and uh, don't forget to check for updates regularly because I'm updating all the time. The automatic updates are great because they just keep you with the latest build of the software. So make sure that you have that check at least once a week. And uh, anyway, stay tuned.